Is corporate social responsibility a public relations exercise? Is it a nice thing to ascribe to and at the same time easy to slough off? The answer is a combination of yes and no. On the surface, it's easy to say your company believes in supporting and contributing to the community as a whole. The cost of a CSR program, however, poses a challenge for the keepers of the money who frequently question the value. Accountants and financial officers are asked to look at everything as a return on investment, and in so doing, determine if a responsibility program is beyond the company's budget. Well, that may have been the traditional line of thinking. It no longer applies. It alienates staff who are demanding that the work they do contribute to the whole of society rather than just the bottom line. According to a MIT Sloan management review entitled Using Corporate Responsibility to Win the War for Talent, employers with a CSR program enjoy greater employee satisfaction and retention. Employees, customers, and investors are all taking CSR programs into account when they sign on, when they purchase, and when they invest. We invited Kim Thompson of Avisa Wealth to join us for a conversation that matters about why corporate social responsibility needs to be a part of every company's mission statement and practices. Conversations That Matter is a partner program for the Centre for Dialogue at Simon Fraser University. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. Welcome. So corporate social responsibility, it's a very interesting topic. You know, what is it? How do we measure it? Why is it important? If I'm an investor, do I want to be investing in companies that, that pay attention to this? You, of course, pay a lot of attention to it because you are looking at those kinds of companies to say, well, these are the organizations that we want to invest money in. But let's start off with a definition of what corporate so social responsibility really is. It is actually putting in place a, a program within your, within your organization that um, speaks to uh, the cause of uh, what it is, uh, how are you going to align yourself and making a difference in your, in your community and, and, um, and then how are you going to assess your success within, uh, within that program. Um, and, and it does need to align to the corporate culture. There's no sense in having a, a corporate social responsibility program that's not aligned with what, what is important to the employee base of your organization. Otherwise, you're going to lose the benefits of having that program in place. How grand or significant or complicated or complex does it have to be before it actually qualifies as corporate social responsibility? It's probably some reflection of the size of the organization that you are, obviously, and that um, there are various programs out there that you can um, uh, align yourself to to sort of make declarations around uh, sort of the effectiveness of your corporate social or your CSR programs. But it doesn't need to be sort of terribly sophisticated. I think, um, I, I think it's in keeping with, uh, obviously, what are the goals of the organization and making sure that it's aligned to those goals. Interestingly enough, a lot of organizations will think that a CSR program is a function of just donating money. Right. And, and that's where I think that it, it, it definitely needs to be more than that. It's, it's not just a, a, a reallocation of corporate resources financially into other organizations. Obviously, that's, a, that's an important component. But moreover, I think where you start to actually make an impact with your employee base is when you are engaging them in that, in that program. Uh, mm -hmm. Things like building programs together uh, that then you can take out into the community um, and providing volunteer opportunity for them to be engaged in their, in their communities um, and not just on their own time, but probably more importantly on, on the corporate time so that you're it's not just a, a financial giving, but it's a resource giving as well. That's a pretty big commitment. Uh, I, there's a fellow that I work with who says, you know, it's not really a value until it's going to cost you something. And there must be an awful lot of people who look at this and go, okay, well, as an overriding uh, statement of value, yes, I, be uh, I believe in that. But when it comes down to actually spending the money, it, it's got to be challenging for some organizations to say, okay, I'm going to take these people out of their day-to-day -day role, I'm going to have them commit to this. It's going to cost us money both in paying them their salary and whatever other resources and materials we bring to uh, whatever it is that we're doing. Right. Yeah, no, no doubt. There, there does need to be sort of a, 
a, a legitimately cost perspective that needs to be evaluated as part of your CSR program. But I think if you if you only look at it from a pure financial perspective, you might lose the you know the benefits of of the program, which I would argue um, could you know indirectly also impact your financial results. And I think you know certainly if you look at organizations that have um, disciplined and and well grounded CSR programs you will see a direct connection to them having stronger performance, uh, financial performance. And it comes through the engagement of the employee base. So I just got to get you to hang on for a second while we take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Sorry for the interruption, but I need your help. I'm asking you to support the show by becoming a patron. That means pledging $1 per show. Conversations is a unique program. There's no grandstanding, no arguing, no yelling. Instead, I sit down with people who have unique insights, specialized knowledge, and experiences that inform and enlighten. And we do this on an incredibly limited budget with a very small crew. Well, this is my office and it's where I edit the show. And then once it's ready, we give it away. You know, so many different websites around the world are carrying the show, but they get it for free. They don't pay us. So I'm asking you to pledge $1 per show by going to patreon.com forward slash conversations that matter. Thanks. We want to keep producing conversations and with your help, we can. Now let's get back to the show. So when you are looking at an organization to put your client's money into, what are some of the criteria around CSR that, that matter to you and how do you then go about determining whether or not it's a stated objective or whether or not it's a realized one within that company? Well, there, there's a lot. There, there are some methodologies, methodologies in which you would assess a, a CSR program. If that's part of your sort of screenings, if you will, around um, uh, uh, on your um, responsible investing focus. Um, if ensuring in one of your screens is to ensure that you are investing in CSR uh, recognized organizations, it would be a combination of of um, of you know the percentage of their. Uh, of their uh, financials and their, their dollars that they're actually allocating into the program. It's not just a, a donation perspective, but also equally important is the cost of the allocation of the resources. So there would be a sort of a, a, a criteria that we would look for that are, are they sort of meeting that objective and, 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 and is that then define them as being having a, a, a strong and a grounded CSR program. Are there international standards that are set that, let's say there's somebody who's watching this saying, okay, well, we've got to get into this, and they are a corporation, they're looking at their own CSR program or to, to, to implement one. Are there standards that they can go and say, well, there's the template that I can uh, uh, refer to that says these are the, 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 the components of an effective uh, CSR program that you know you need to put in place to actually qualify to be able to say, Yes, we are doing this. There are there are there are standards. There are organizations that, um, if you meet their objectives, you can then make declarations around your positioning and uh, of a CSR program. So, by extension, if you have a corporate social responsibility program, does that make you? Uh, an ethical organization because we hear about ethical investing. Does one <laughs> necessarily mean you're the other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now we're getting into a whole different definition. Um, I mean, ethical investing obviously has a, has a broader perspective that um, really takes into the whole ESG and the, you know, responsible investing, you know, uh, enterprise, if you will. Um, CSR could could very well be a component of that, but there's a very um, sort of continuum of what's considered to be responsible investing, and it's defined by m a multitude of different things, being how you're screening out various companies within those investment portfolios, depending on um, whatever criteria that might be deemed uh, a component of that uh, investment objective. So when you look at companies that from after you've gone through a review process and you say, yeah, they really do have a bona fide corporate social responsibility program. How do they perform? Because as we've already mentioned, they are investing in something that doesn't necessarily go directly to their bottom line. There's strong evidence that would suggest that if you have a, um, a CSR program 
that resonates with your employee base, that you're going to see an increase in your employee engagement. And anytime you see an increase in your employee engagement and your employee uh, production, you're absolutely going to see a direct connection into the in, uh, enhancement in your financial results. It's not to suggest, though, <laughs> that all you need to do is go out and put a CSR program in place and you will instantly then have, uh, have better results financially. Mm -hmm. there, it's, it has to be much more you know, thoughtful than that. It ne definitely needs to have some connection into what's important to your employee base and who are you as an organization and how do you want to present that into the into the community um, at, at Aviso we we have spent a lot of time and effort focusing on how do we think you know where do we believe we can make a difference and kids at risk has been an area that we've focused on and but that wasn't something that you know, the CEO and the executive team sat around the table and decided that that would be a worthy cause. It was definitely through engagement and conversations with our employees to make sure that um, where we wanted to spend our efforts and our and our uh, resources uh, is something that they could relate to as, as well. And, and that's really, really critical because to have a, a CSR program mm -hmm. that's uh, that's been dreamt up by us, by the executive team and then kind of pushed out to the organization. In fact, if, if it's not done through that engagement with the employees, you might also find that it could also create some animosity, if you will, internally, that it's uh, it's not where they want to uh, want to see their efforts or their uh, their resources. What was the process that you went through to develop this Kids at Risk uh, program that you uh, now support through your own employee engagement? So we, we have a sort of a, a, a subcommittee, if you will, that has um, all levels of the organization that, that participate on. And it, so it would have been through conversations uh, with them. We did believe, again, for an organization of our size, that, uh, that we wanted to, to make sure that uh, we had some clarity and how we were focusing our efforts um, in our CSR program. And so uh, through those conversations with our staff, um, that's where the, uh, the decision was made that we would definitely focus on sort of a kids at risk um, profile. And so we do that in a, in a number of different ways. Most recently, we just um, we run uh, uh, in conjunction with here in Vancouver, the Kids Safe uh, program, we run a financial literacy camp. The building of that program was done by the employees. It wasn't again a program that we bought off a shelf and then launched out to the to the Kids Safe uh, group, but it was something that we built from within. And so we had other, you know, we had employees participate in the building of that program, and that in itself, just the formulation of the program, is very engaging and it, it really connects with the employees. What's the benefit to your employee culture, your corporate culture? in having done this? I think that the employee culture, it's, uh, you, you've probably run other sessions on this, mm -hmm. but certainly, you know, when you look at, uh, and this isn't exclusive to millennials, but certainly when you look at um, younger cohorts in, in the business environment today, um, they have a very strong connection to the why of the organization. And, and the why isn't always just around the profits of the organization, but moreover, how are you making a difference in the world today? And so that sounds rather grand, um, but, but in itself, it, it's, it's very important that employees do believe that or are a part of your why and that you can articulate your why. And, and so this, um, working with kids at risk, um, I, I, personally, I have, I have found it, it it's, you know, we go through our day-to-days at work and, you know, they're long days and they're, they're good and bad days, but when you have that opportunity to step outside of that day-to-day -day grind, if you will, and be in the community and, and you're delivering a component of, of expertise, if you will, and, and seeing that impact, I have no idea about the longer-term impact, but working mm -hmm. with, with those kids, um, those are moments in time you will never forget.
Mm -hmm. and, and that is what, that's the pull to the organization because you know your organization is committed to making a difference in its community. Well, I'm happy to hear that you do that because if, if you're also evaluating other companies to say, oh, is this going to be a good investment opportunity, what's their corporate social responsibility program, you need to be able to measure it against your own efforts and to do the same. Do we as individuals, as investors, need to be having that same kind of mindset as well? What, what is it that, yes, I want to make money by investing and getting behind these companies, but what is it that I also can do to contribute to helping to improve the environment that we live in or even far off environments? Well, absolutely, and we're certainly seeing you know, the, the responsible investing um, move in a much more meaningful way um, to the retail investor, if you will, it, on the institutional side, I think uh, been part of their programs for perhaps a little, little bit longer. But we are seeing, you know, definitely folks wanting to ensure that they're that they're investing that through their investments, which is another way that you can you can make a difference. But you're ensuring that your investments are also putting or are, are uh, helping make a difference in the organization. And so there is a continuum of what that what that looks like. And then that and that is that's very much a, a personal perspective on whether that say um, what components of those the screening of those firms looks like. But we're, we are seeing many more sort of retail investors wanting, wanting to take a position with their investable assets in, uh, in how, those at, how their money is making a difference in the world. And is it making a difference? Is it making a difference like within the financial community? Because you know, a lot of people will look at that financial community and go, well, it's all just about dollars making money. But is this mindset around investing in companies that at least are making contributions through their, you know, their own responsible programs, um, is the investment community exerting pressure on those companies that want to attract investors? Well, absolutely. There's, you know, there's certainly um, uh, um, different methodologies in applying sort of uh, your evaluation of a firm. There's um, through s simple sort of stock screening, if you will, that uh, that uh, against different disciplines, but also being an advocate and uh, and and actually taking a position with a company as you invest your money um, at the executive level. We're seeing much more of that taking place. Um, so so you know overall, um, I, I think it, it's this is not a fad. It's not a trend. Mm -hmm. I, I think it is. It's just it's it's a function of who we are as an as an industry and who we are globally, in that uh, pe you know people want to stand up and and then take a position and make sure that their that their money is is um, is is working to make a difference uh, in the world. So when your research team goes out to determine whether or not they want to recommend investment in a particular company, has this become a significant part of their assessment of a potential uh, opportunity? Well, certainly um, we do have um, a very robust um, RI team that, uh, that evaluates against the, the, whatever this, the investment objective is of, of, the, um, of the investment. Um, and um, ensuring that the organizations um, would have a, a, a CSR program would be a component of it because it, it's in keeping with, with, that, uh, with that company. But um, it wouldn't be the only um, aspect that they no, would look at. No, of course at. not, yeah. But, because but you still want to make a sound uh, investment. Well, that, yeah. that, that's right. But, <laughs> yeah. but certainly, uh, but ensuring that they... Um, because again, if if, uh, if you're you know declaring yourself to be one thing, but then your corporate social responsibility program, if you don't have one, or if you're certainly not engaging in it, then you know you have to certainly assess that against the merits of of the uh, investment of the uh, organization. Well, it starts to talk about the integrity of the management team that's as right. well, doesn't exactly. it? That's right. Exactly. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's my point. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, it it adds another dimension to the whole process of not only the work that you do, your own team's uh, commitment towards um, being socially responsible, but then the way that it extends out to all of us. Do we know whether or not it's having an impact in, in, in changing local environments? Like you, you talk about kids at risk, but do, are, are there sort of some great examples out there that we can point to and go, there's, there's an organization that has really made a difference as a result of that corporate social responsibility? 
Well, I, I certainly am, and I'm quite likely biased, but uh, but if I could, you know, certainly hold out. Um, we we work quite intimately with the credit union system in Canada. Um, that is our our uh, our our partners. Right. Um, they themselves are very focused on and would also evaluate their ability and how they are actually making a difference in in their communities. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I would you know certainly suggest that um, that you, your local uh, credit union. Um, it, would have a, a very strong ability and, and, and is making a very big difference in, in those communities in a multitude of ways. Well, we had Tamara Vorman from Van City in right. a, a couple of years ago and talking about, she said, well, we have a responsibility to people who are relying on payday loans and that they are being taken advantage of. And so they said, we are going to move into that market when nobody else wants to, we're going to go there and we're going to provide services that are not going to be so uh, uh, expensive. Um, and, and so, the, and I do know that within the credit union uh, community, there is uh, an understanding of what the cost of poverty is. And so that if they can start to work to, to, to help alleviate that, that it, that it is making a difference. That's right, and, and uh, I don't want to speak on their behalf because no, they themselves right. would be much uh, mm -hmm. m much more credible in speaking of, um, you know to their own to their own programs, but um, but just the very fact that um, they're very focused on ensuring sort of financial sustain sustainable well being for all Canadians irrespective of your wealth and, and, and your position in, in your community, but understanding that they're there to re, you know, vitalize that, that community, um, make a difference in that community, and ensuring that, that they have the ability to financially assist all aspects of that community. And, and, and it, it's, um, that's just not a motherhood apple pie statement. That, that, right. is, that is locked and loaded what they do and what they believe in and and I, I admire every aspect of that. I guess one of the other things that you look for is how long has their commitment been in place? How do they keep coming back or staying with this? That, that really shows you what their, uh, their belief is around the fact that they can make a difference and that it reflects the values of the company. That's right and, yeah. and, and, and mo most of them have been doing this for a very very long time and What's been an interesting sort of um, learning for me in, uh, in sort of, I've always lived in, in major urban centers and, and so my, uh, not, my son plays hockey in a small community in, in Saskatchewan and so it's given me a really good uh, exposure to a, a small community and, and I will tell you the credit union in that community has a considerable impact in uh, ensuring that community you know, continues to be vitalized and from a, both a business perspective as well as a, a you know, a, a retail investor, a, a member perspective. Well, I think this is a very important uh, issue and uh, type of program for all organizations to engage in. Thank you very much for coming in and sharing this with Thank us. You.